it's the ultimate non-deterministic Turing machine. So uh, this is the topic of our discussion today. We, uh, in the uh, uh, slides uh, in this uh, presentation, we'll describe it. The team members consist of Moitra Das, Devjita, Devjit Kundu, Ahona Basu, and myself, Devjita Mondo. Uh, the table of contents will be describing this, what is Turing machine, the features of standard Turing machine. We'll uh, describe a real life example of a Turing machine. The, uh, 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 the Turing machine is classified into a number of steps, so we'll see, uh, tell us, talk about that. Then comes the most important part the non deterministic Turing machine, the example of a non deterministic Turing machine, and we'll conclude with an application. And uh, next thing, uh, so what is a Turing machine? A Turing machine, as we know, consists of a shape of infinite length. So the basic difference between a Turing machine and the uh, other like TDA and AC as given in the lower levels of the Chomsky hierarchy is that in Turing machine the it is in a it is in a finite automata along with a read write facilities. So in case of uh, when we say a finite automata it is the most basic part then comes the TDA which is a, a finite automata with an infinite step and then next comes the Turing machine which is a finite automata along with read write facilities. So here as we can see a diagram of the uh, Turing machine like a schematic diagram. So here are the tape symbols given and, the, uh, and we can see as the uh, tape of infinite length as there are do, uh, dots given in the uh, ends we see that it is an of infinite length that uh, tells us that uh, the, the, the uh, Turing machine is of infinite length. Next we will be going on to the technical definitions of Turing machine. We will uh, introduce the terms which we will be using in, uh, in, the for, in the further definition and the diagrams of the Turing machine. So first, is it, uh, a Turing machine is expressed in a seven couple format. So uh, the uh, first we'll define Q. What is Q? A Q is the number of states, finite states that we have. Next is T. T is the tape alphabet which tells us about all the symbols that we use in the Turing machine. Next is the B, the blank symbol which uh, tells us the starting and the ending point of the uh, Turing machine. Then is the uh, uh, input alphabet. It, uh, the input alphabet consists of all the uh, Digits are all the alphabets that we use to represent the states in the Turing machine. Next is the transition function. The transition function maps the present state uh, and the present state to the new state. Next is the Q naught, which is the uh, which tells us about the initial state. It marks where the uh, where the string is to enter or where, where the program is to like the, is to start. Next is F. F is the, uh, the final state. Or we can also say it as the accepting state. Our string after reaching the fi uh, a after f state, like if I take a state q and uh, uh, mark it as uh, like a double, like we usually uh, define the state as a circle, and if it's double circle, it that is a final state. So uh, final state defines it is an accepting state. That is a string is accepted there. Next, we will be. Uh, I'll just uh, give an example of a, a gate question that has been that has come in this, uh, year 2004. So X is a simple mathematical model of a computer. X has unrestricted and unlimited memory. X is a finite automata with three bright weight. X can have an infinite tape divided into cells and each cell holding one thing. So the question is name X. But we have uh, four options. One is full down automata, non-deterministic finite automata, Turing machine and none of the mentions. So the main, there are two main points in this question. That is, one is saying that uh, X is an FA with read write weight. So this is only possible in case of a Turing machine. And the next line we have is X can have an infinite tape divided into cells. So an infinite tape divided into cells also means that it is in Turing machine. So, uh, the, uh, but the since we have the, like the first line says that it is an FA with read write weight, it is very clear that it is a Turing machine. So the answer is a Turing. Machine. So uh, next is the features of the standard Turing machine. Uh, the feature says that uh, the, uh, it, it basically says that one of the advantage of the uh, Turing machine over the others is that uh, in, in case of CDA, it does not accept a to the power of n, b to the power of n, uh, c to the power of n. Like languages like, like this, but uh, the Turing machine accepts this. So even if Turing machine does not accept null, it is, a, it is advantageous over the others because uh, it. It increases it, uh, the length of the state of accepting languages increases in case of pairing machine. Next is the bidirectional movement uh, control. Uh, most of this go back. Next is the bidirectional movement. 
So what the bidirectional movement says that in case of Sundia, we use an infinite stack. So it is an uh, unidirectional one. Like we cannot uh, use both the directions of the stack to uh, uh, take out and re uh, rewrite specifically. So in case of PD, it is an unidirectional. In case of SA, it is also unidirectional. But in case of CM, which is a bidirectional, it is bidirectional. It is uh, extremely advantageous. Next is the TF is the most cru uh, crucial part of the TM as all the input functions are done on the tape uh, only. Uh, uh, in case of linear bounded automata, movement is uh, only restricted as I said that in case of uh, except, uh, input tape, while in curing machine, movement in both directions is accepted. Like as I previously said, it is uh, in the, uh, the other, uh, it is an inspired, like in TDA in case of it is just a, a unidirectional one. TM acts as both an acceptor and a translation. So what is an acceptor? Uh, the acceptor is a machine that tells whether a string belongs to the language or not. While a translation uh, may, uh, convert, that converts an input to the output. So with this, I end my part and I want Ohona Kasu to take up this. Uh, thank you so much, Devdita, for explaining the basics of Turing machine so well. Now I will be continuing with a real life example of Turing machine, uh, where the first one says that we know that we are like nothing without a machine in these days. So we have computers with us, uh, with us and the CPU of that computers are basically the Turing machines that we will be studying in our slides. And the next example is a problem that I will be discussing in very much detail, which is uh, to like to find the two's complement of a binary number. We all know what a two co two's complement is, but in this uh, like process of solving the question, we will approach we will uh, do the approach in a different way so which is basically we will come from the like last of the string or the binary string and we will see where we meet the first one we have zeros and ones in a binary string so we will see where we meet the first one and once we meet that one we do nothing up to that but once we start moving forward of, of that string we will do the ones complement that is we will convert the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones so this is the basic approach that we will apply over here for this problem and this problem has come in uh, gate 2015 for one marks to find what for one mark to find the number of states in the turing machine or the like state diagram okay so Okay, for, uh, so in this case, in the uh, in finding the two's complement, the Turing machine is acting as a transducer. As Devjita said in the previous slide, transducer is a machine which converts the input to the output. So here we are given with an input. You can uh, follow the example here. And we are converting the input into, the, into its two's complement, that is the output that we desire to find. Now, for this Turing machine, what we will do is, we have, we know that we have two blanks in both sides of the tape of the Turing machine and we have the string in between the blanks. So now what we will do, we always, we know that the read write hit is always present at the first, like the point of the string, the first bit. So we will first traverse to the last bit without doing anything, without doing any action. Now as we reach the last bit, how we will understand that we have reached the last bit? We will meet the B, the black. Now, once we reach B, we will come one bit like backward. So, from there, we will start our process. So, what we will do is, we will like uh, ignore everything and we will go to the first one that we are meeting while coming backwards. Then, as I have as I have told already, that we will convert the ones into zeros and zeros, zeros into ones. So, next slide, please. In the next slide, we will understand using the state diagram that how we are doing this particular problem. So we have four states over here. We have Q0 as the starting state or the initial state. So as we as we see here that here it is written one slash one comma r, which is which means that once we get one as the input from the buffer, we replace it with one. That is, we do nothing and then we move right. So R means right. So we will see here that we will move right as I have as I've already said, said that the read write head is pointing to the first bit. So we have to move right the whole string we have to traverse. So we are moving right. We are meeting one, zero, everything we are meeting. We are replacing with that symbol only. That is we are doing nothing and we are moving right. So once we meet a blank, 
like in the transition part from Q0 to Q1, you can locate here. Once we are meeting the blank, we are also doing nothing here, but we are moving left so that we can meet the last bit that is the least uh, significant bit LSB of the string E. Now we have made the last bit. Now if it is a 0, we do nothing, we move left. If it is a 1, we will go to the next state that is we will go left but do nothing with that one that is replace it with one only now as uh, now in the q2 state you can notice here that there is a loop and there is one which is replaced by uh, zero moving left and zero replaced by one moving left again that is this particular state is the most important state of this particular diagram which is doing the ones complete so we are replacing the zeros with ones and ones with zeros and as we have replaced all the things and moved to the uh, like across the first bit, then we meet a blank. Once we meet a blank, what we do? We move uh, like we replace it with a blank again, and we move right, and then we reach the final state. It says that we have reached the like we have pointed our read right head to the first bit of the string again. So we have done the whole traversal. We have done the whole use complement. We have changed the input to the output. So that was the basic problem over here. Now I will just uh, briefly explain what a transition table or transition function means. So you can see here the like the handwritten part. It says that the transition function in bracket q0 comma 1 transiting to q0 comma 1 comma r, which means that the q0 state getting 1 will transit to q0 state again replacing by 1 and moving towards right so this is the whole thing this is the whole transition table over here i won't be explaining all the transitions so that was all about the problem i want much more to go to the next page so uh, now we will start our main topic which is the non deterministic turing machine which is one of the classifications of standard Turing machines. You can see here, we are doing the classification on the basis, basis of the modifications made on standard Turing machine. Why are the modifications done? We need the most, like, uh, most significant or the most efficient output from a standard Turing machine by modifying it with many options. If the first, for example, the first one, it is, it is having a stay option, but standard Turing machine doesn't have one. In the B, we have a semi-infinite tape, which is taking less, definitely less amount of memory in our uh, like CPU, in our computer. So, like this, we are doing modifications, and also we have the non-deterministic during a machine in the modification. So, next page, please. So, what is basically a non-deterministic Turing machine? Uh, it is similar to the non-deterministic finite automata, but in this case we have some more details into it because it is a Turing machine which is capable of doing everything basically. So non-deterministic Turing machine is also called as choice machines because it has many choices on the basis of the input symbols it is getting. It, it cannot basically, it is not basically going to a particular determined state after getting an input. It can get an input and it can go to many states. Uh, like so, that is the point, and the second point is that and the speed is similar to the, the uh, like the things are similar or parallel to the non-deterministic finite automata. And the most important thing is that the difference between non-deterministic Turing machine and deterministic Turing machine lies in the transition function of that particular Turing machine where the sigma says the transition function, eh, sorry, del says the transition function, and q, getting the, uh, q that is the number of, uh, the state of the Turing machine, getting the input symbol from the tape, is going to 2 to the power of q, input symbol, and lr, which means that it is going towards the finite subsets of the, uh, like the choices of states that we are getting. So that is the basic thing here. So that was all about the non-deterministic Turing machine. And with this, I want to end my part. Hope you understood all the things that I've explained. And I want to give uh, more. So we have to construct a non-deterministic non Turing machine which accepts the language over 0 and 1. Here, the Turing machine has an acceptor. 
so the language as you can see it tells us that every string of zeros and ones then it is followed by itself for the under this language the logic for solving this problem can be divided into two parts first part is finding the midpoint of the string and second part is after we have found the midpoint we have to match the symbol for doing this we have to first understand the example let's take an example like 0101101 so w here is 1 to 1 and the string is of the form ww what we will do is that first we have to do is to find the midpoint for this we have to convert one beginning into y and move right till the end of the string like this we are getting the uh, form of y 0110y now we have to move left if we find an x find the x or a y when we do so we convert 0 to 1 to the right of it and or to x or y respectively and then to the same on the right end now our string will look like y x 1 1 x y as we can see that the zeros are replaced by x and the ones are replaced by y the beginning to 1 thereafter we will convert the one to the left finally it would look like y x y y x y at this point we have achieved the first objective that is to find the midpoint of the string now, now we have to convert all x and y from the left to the midpoint to 0 and 1 so the string becomes 1 to the 1 y x y now we have to convert 1 into y and move right till we find y in the beginning of the right part of the string and convert this y into a blank denoted by t. Now the, the string looks like y 0 1 t x y. Here t is the right of 1. Similarly we are applying this to on 0 and x followed by 1 and y. After this the string looks like y x y t t t. All we can see is that on the right side of the midpoint all the things are converted to t. Now we have only 0 and 1 and then and all x and y on the right part and the string also is converted into blanks so our string will be accepted. A question here is state that L belongs to W, W such that W belongs to 0 and 1. It is accepted by and the answer will be Turing machine as we have seen from the explanation above. Now assumption is that we will replace 0 by x and y 1 by y. What is our approach? As you can see that our input is 1100 and it is accepted but 1011101 is not accepted. The first thing that we do is find the midpoint on the string and convert it to 0 or 1 beginning of the string into x or y respectively and the corresponding 0 or 1 to x or y to the end of the string. After continuously doing it, a point is reached where all zeros and 1s have been converted into x and y respectively. At this point, we are on the midpoint on the string was the first object to full string. Now converting all the x and y on the left side of the midpoint to 0 and 1. At this point, the first half of the string is in the form of 0 and 1. The second half will be in the form of x and y. Now, the start of the beginning of the string, we have to give a 0, then convert it into x and move it right to the second half. There, uh, we can find x, then convert it into blank. Then transfers back to find x and or, or y. We convert or 1 on the right of it onto into x or y as a ticket corresponding to convert its x or y from the second half of the string to a blank key. While, keep, while we keep doing this, finally we can see that some symbols in the other half are left unchanged and the strings will not be accepted. We do not find an x or an y in the second half of the corresponding 0 and y as a in the first half. The now string will be accepted. You can see the uh, diagram here. The junction functions are given and the diagram is here. Q0 is the uh, initial starting state and Q9 is the uh, final state. And here you can see that uh, it is accepting 0, x or r and it moving on the next state respectively. In the diagram you can see that uh, similarly all the other transition functions are written. This is basically taking us that uh, Q state on getting 0 from input buffer goes to Q1 state and it passes 0 by x in the tape and moves on, on the right r. So here R is moving on the right command and X is representing the 0 by X. Next I will uh, ask this to take. So here in this slide I will explain about R deterministic Turing machine and non-deterministic Turing machine equivalent in power for every modification or not. So as we already know Turing machine equals to finite automata plus 1 while Q equals to finite automata plus 2 which is also equals to finite automata plus 10 and also push down automata equals to finite automata plus infinity step. But what if we construct one Turing machine by DK, which is deterministic to down uh, automata plus one dependent step 
also another one by non-deterministic fusion automata plus one dependent cell. Will they be equivalent or not? So the answer is a big no. Since NPDA is more powerful than DPDA, as DPDA cannot express the language of L equals to W into W for R, but the accessible by NPDA, which is non-deterministic fusion automata. Hence, having an extra set to be DPDA would make it more powerful. Because at that point of view, also it cannot be understand where W is and so that W R can be formed. So now in this slide, uh, we can see our gate question is being mentioned, which is, in which our training machine is given, which is M equals to Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, AB, AB, capital B, delta, and capital B, Q. So the, where delta is a transition function defined as delta, delta uh, so the, we can also, we can see the question as so. Now, now in the only right side, you, uh, we draw a diagram according to the question, and now we will tally all the options to the diagram. So according to the first option, Q0 on getting a A goes to the Q1 by replacing a A with A. That is not replacing it at all. Hence, accepting a the accepting A as a first symbol of a stream. So on the second option, Q1 is getting B goes to the Q2 by replacing B with B. That is not replacing at all again. So, but in this third, third option, but at Q2 on getting a, a control loop infinitely, that is where here for B to come from input buffer, hence A gets accepted after AB. So, our answer in this question is the option C. And also, we can see the option D, which is Q2 on getting B goes to Q3 by replacing B with B that is not replacing at all again. So, moving on to the next slide. So here in this slide, I would like to conclude by saying, in theoretical computer science, a non-deterministic Turing machine is a theoretical model of a computer whose governing rules specify more than one possible action when in some given situation. So that is an ancient snake state which is not completely determined by its action. And the science symbol is this, unlike the deterministic Turing machine. So now I will discuss the application of it, which are uh, NPM are sometimes used in thought experiment to examine the abilities and the limits of computers. One of the most important problems in theoretical computer science is P versus NP problem, which, which concerns the question of how difficult is it to simulate a non-deterministic computation with a deterministic computer. And also, Turing machine, uh, Turing machine finds application in algorithm information theory and complexity studies, software testing, high performance computing, machine learning, computer interfacing, and so on. So, next slide please. Uh, okay, so these are some references from, we, from which we take help to make this PPT. And that's all from our side. I hope you like it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good presentation by you all.